Hey guys, I'm here and welcome back to ATS Season 2. Welcome to version 1.31 as well. It is officially out, finally. After what, like a month? Yeah, it's finally out. And also welcome to, well not yet, but soon, welcome to Mexico. I decided to enable Viva Mexico and Mexico Extremo actually. They're both compatible with 1.31. Viva Mexico is version 2.4.4 I think. And that is available in the Mexico Extremo website. So I think Viva Mexico is uh, this area, originally by Hugo Says. But uh, the Mexico Extremo team got permission from him to update it for 1.31. And the Mexico Extremo, I think, is this part. Don't quote me on that though, but around that point, I would say. Yes? I've never been there before. So let's uh, explore that together. Let's start off here though. Let's enter Mexico together, starting off from Yuma, traveling to Mexicali or Mexicali, and uh, traveling somewhere here. It's going to be more straightforward, and we'll be exploring how the official 1.31 looks like, if it's any different from the beta, and we'll see, let's uh, do some Q&A as well along the way. Of course, we are still in our uh, beautiful truck, Volvo VNL 670 by Aredith, modified by Tom Dooley for 1.31. With a beautiful engine sound as suggested by you guys. Now the mirrors I think should be realistic but uh, maybe not. I think it is though, I think it kinda is. Well, <laughs> you guys let me know. Um, it might be a placebo effect. Or it might be actually the new ones because I did change the physical mirrors, I think. If you go to G physical mirrors, G fis mirrors, where was it? That one. I set that specifically to one and then I restarted the game. Even though the default is zero, one is I think the, the ones with the new POV. I think I got that correctly, but in case I didn't, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope I don't get hit with FPS issues. Alright, Tesla to cat. What what kind of uh, trailer is that? I have no clue. I, there is no option to change it, interestingly enough. Transmission 17 tons. I only hope this has, this has trailer cables. So yeah, that's our path. Traveling to El Centro, Mexicali, Sonoita, and uh, Caborca. And if I'm getting any of these pronunciations wrong, let me know in the comments as well. Because as always, we're here to learn, not only to enjoy. Yeah, so let's go and learn together. So let's pick up the trailer, get things going, and let's uh, proceed with the Q&A. I've gotten a couple of questions from you guys. Thank you for those. Maybe let's not go too fast. Might be a recipe for disaster in this area. Okay, there we go. Express freight. Woodcock Brothers. Hmm. <laughs> Just about the only thing not delivered by a truck. What? It is delivered by a truck. Anyway, it's good to finally have the official 1.31 out. Okay, let, let's see. Let's see how the mirrors look like. If they are remotely. Yeah, it doesn't look like the mirrors for the VNL 670 are updated because it does seem like it's still a bit warped out. Like the... and I still haven't changed the tire scrap, I forgot about it. Yeah, it still seems a bit deformed. The updated POV, the updated mirror should have a more, uh, how do you say, realistic POV. So it shouldn't be like warped out, distorted, shouldn't be wide. There we go. Let's see. Trailer cables work beautiful. Not even sure which trailer pack this comes from. This is Sizzles or someone else's. Anyway, let's proceed. Good thing the cables are working. And we'll see what else is new from that point of view. Please don't hit anything. Not this early in the game. The engine sounds a bit quiet, doesn't it? Maybe I just got used to the W900B that I was streaming with last clumsy trucking stream. Also, you might notice 
Oh, this is not fully... You might notice a bit of a weirdness in here. I still have Google Maps uh, GPS turned on. But I have Viva Mexico enabled. Normally, Google Maps GPS mod is not compatible with other map mods. And the main problem you'll get is if you put the GPS mod on top in terms of load in terms of priority in the mod order, um, you're, you will have problems with the uh, zooming. So when you go to the map, like when you press M and you zoom, ooh, that doesn't look good. Let's go through here. Let's go through here. Does not look good? There you go. Just turn around. Let's. Uh... Oh, it's hot dog guy. <laughs> we all know this guy. Let's get a better look at him. There he is. Hey, bro. How are you? <laughs> Man, that's a very difficult job, huh? Props to him, though. Right, let's go. Okay, we'll have to go around. That's fine. All right. So what I was, what was I talking about? The GPS mod, yes. So normally, if you have it uh, on top, and if you go to the map screen like this, you'll only have access like up to here, and you won't be able to, to scroll. Like if you have Viva Mexico or Coast to Coast, you won't be able to scroll further down or further to the right. It will be locked to this point, which is super frustrating. Now, a way to work around that is to change the load order. Put the GPS mod below the Viva Mexico mod so that the map zoom will be correct. So you can zoom like this. You can see everything. The problem with that is that the, the colors will be back to default. Even if you have the Google Maps GPS mod, which should make the arrows blue or the lines blue instead of the usual red, it will be become red because it's in a bottom uh, priority, lower priority than the, the Viva Mexico one. So th the way to work around that and what I've done is to change the map data SII file, I think, inside the Viva Mexico. Up, 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 up. Oh, that car absolutely did not give way. I blame him on that. Clumsy trucking. <laughs> um, yeah, so I changed the map data SII file of the Viva Mexico uh, SES file. I changed it manually. Changed some of the changed some of the the lines in there to change the colors from red to this bluish, more like Google Maps GPS. Although, as you can see, I am seeing like yellow roads and gray roads. In the original Google Maps GPS, everything is grayed out. There is no yellow part, if you remember that. So it's not it's not completely replicated yet. And these colors, th this specific blue, I actually got from uh, a post in the Steam Workshop. Tacos. Ooh, it's a taste of things to come. So if you go and look at the Steam Workshop page for the Google Maps GPS, the dark, the dark mode, the night mode, you'll see that someone was kind enough to test and uh, check out the different colors, try to replicate it and post it there so you can just copy the the, the values the exact color or as, at least as close as it would go for this thing so that it just copied the, the the colors from there and applied it to the map data sii file for viva mexico so if you want to do the same then at least you get some kind of uh, uh, you're not you're not uh, removing the google maps gps fully because I really love the icons and the, the colors. Maybe I just need to remove the yellow things because that doesn't look so good. It's better if it's all grayed out. It's more functional this way, but yeah, fine. Good. Also, we might have to reroute a bit because this will not really pass through here. We have to pa go around like so, explore Mexicali. Uh, Sonoita, Puerto Penasco, that is pretty interesting. Let's go and explore that as well, why not? So we have more times for the questions, and then Caborca. Puerto Penasco. 
So as you might know, I am Filipino. I'm originally from the Philippines. And the Philippines was under Spanish rule for, for hundreds of years back in the day. So we've gotten quite a bit of uh, Spanish influence. Like our language is uh, heavily influenced by Spanish. Actually, I think a couple of years ago, the previous generation, uh, they were required to study Spanish. It was part of the curriculum in college, I think. But nowadays, I didn't really get to that point when I studied. When I was studying, it was no longer required, so actually I don't know much. Which is a pity, because Spanish is such a very interesting language. Anyway, so that's why some of the words I'm familiar how to uh, pronounce, but some of them for sure not. It's quite interesting actually. So a lot of our names are Spanish as well. A lot of Filipino names are Spanish in nature. And I guess it's similar to, that's why it kind of sounds similar to Mexican names. And even the cities like the Puerto Penasco or something like that, which we, we, we saw on the map. Oh, this is nice. It's uh, in the Philippines, we have a lot of puerto. I'm not even sure what puerto means. Is, does it mean port? Because it's usually in the beach area, like Puerto Galera, Puerto Princesa. I guess puerto is, I don't know, port, I would say. That's the closest word I can think of in terms of spelling, that is. Oh, we're at 55 already. Okay, let's lock it in, 55 miles. Can we go eight high with this very low revs? I think it's too low actually. Yeah, it sounds like the, the engine is a bit complaining, but uh, that would yield to better fuel mileage. So let's stick with it. That blue and yellow thing is not the best combination. Huh? Yeah, I think I have to make that gray. I'll try to remember that for the next episode. It's not that bad, but could be better. And I like that the, the GPS, the Google GPS is mostly still working. Like the speed limit is still on the right of the GPS instead of the usual on the left. All right, so yeah, the only thing that's missing is maybe the, the colors. Let's go and cruise along here. Going to exit on this junction and move cross over to the left. El Centro discovered. That's convenient. Didn't need to even have to go inside it. Can I slow down a bit more, please? Because it's a full stop area. And uh, after we get here in this part, we'll start with the QA, right? I guess I can squeeze in. Bro, stop there. Don't be like the other guy a while ago. Thank you. Yeah, a trucker knows. A trucker knows when to stop. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Residential area. Okay, good. I think we can start with the Q&A now. So in the ETS2 episode, a couple of, two, I guess two days ago, when this video will be released, I uh, basically answered just one question, and that's the Android versus iOS thing. And if you're interested in uh, hearing my opinions on that, go and check it out. I think that's episode, what, 218 or 219? That's the, the, the title is Mr. Capital's Mercedes uh, MP3, Actros MP3 2.0 reworks. Uh, why is that car so slow? And are we crossing over now to the Mexican border? It seems like it. Seems like there's no one here though, interestingly enough. Interesting. Yeah, I think this is it. The US flag. And, uh, sh there should be the Mexican flag in a bit. Looks like there is a huge hump up ahead. There we go, Mexico. So I guess this is the start of Viva Mexico. Bienvenidos. Welcome to Mexico. There it is. Right there. Now can we get a photo of that? We can try, at the very least. There we go, Viva Mexico by Hugo Cess and Mexico Extremo by the team Eblem and Raul. 
I love that logo. That logo from Mexico Extremo is so nice. It looks a bit like Pro Mods, but very different in terms of colors. There we go. Can we get like, uh, yeah, show the, the sign. Yes, show the sign. Of course, remove that. It's something like so. Hmm, maybe a bit wider then. Yeah, that can work. That can work. Not too shabby. But yeah, Viva Mexico is one of the staples of the map modding community in ATS, and it's been it's, it's been out since ever since almost ever since ATS came out, and so it's been through a couple of different versions. It's been improving ever since. And you'll definitely notice that with the quality of the map, yeah? Lots of different houses, different things happening, but not laggy, but so many so many uh, things happening at the same time. And we are speeding 20 only at this point. Baya, California. Bienvenidos. Is that Baja or Baya? I would say it's Baya. But you guys let me know. Here in Singapore, we have a, or a, like a Mexican restaurant that has the Baya name. And I never knew how to pronounce it correctly. But yeah, it's good, it's good. It's not like authentic Mexican, but I guess fast food Mexican type. I love Mexican food. And although I'm on keto diet, so I don't really eat like carbs, rice, bread, the salad is beautiful the salad is so good i can have that every day burrito bowl burrito salad burrito without the the flour the the the, the wrap what do you call it pita bread or something yeah this is so nice i only wonder when the speed limit will change because 20 is not a very uh, practical speed anyway so yeah uh, let's start with the Q&A. First is from Rohan. Rohan asked, are you planning to give your fellow viewers, followers, subscribers a giveaway soon? Rohan is a fan of giveaways. Um, and I'm sure many people are. Who isn't, right? Oh, and crap. Going. Yeah, let's stick to 20, please. Thank you. Just cruising along here. Um, I am actually planning on doing a mini giveaway, so don't get your hopes up. I'm not really a rich guy, so I, I'm not really, I don't have the, the capacity to do giveaways, like massive giveaways. But I'm thinking of doing something, a, a giveaway, during the 10k, when we reach 10,000 subscribers. We are pretty close, we are I think at 9.5, and we're growing slowly, but surely, so eventually, we will reach that point and when we do, I'll probably plan a, a stream or something. So we can all uh, join and uh, celebrate together. Come on, bro. Make it. Thank you, Mexicali. Awesome. Asian fast food in Mexico, why not? There's also always Asian food anywhere you go. Good. We have a uh, specifically modeled uh, Mexican gas stations. Is that Pemex? There you go, Pemex. Very nice, isn't it? Very nice. Custom models and everything. Oh, and it's 55 in here now. That's pretty ironic. When you get to the city, then it gets to 55. Although you do have speed bumps like this, which I call humps. We call humps back in Manila. In our village, it's filled with humps all throughout. So I'm pretty used to this concept of having speed bumps. Anyway, yes, so I'm planning to do a mini giveaway during the, the celebration of the 10K subs. Either during the stream itself or maybe also like an offline giveaway thing because not everyone can join the, the stream. So everyone will have a fair chance. Maybe a giveaway on the stream and also a giveaway on the uh, offline, like a video and then maybe doing a draw after one to two weeks maybe two weeks 
I'm not sure yet what I will give out. Um, but it's not going to be anything big. It's just going to be like a token of my appreciation for their support. But yeah, not going to be anything big, just a small token. I'm thinking right now I'll probably want to give out like, like uh, red bubble coupons, <laughs> red bubble uh, gift certificates, gift cards. And Redbubble is the the site where I have my CG merchandise, <laughs> so it's, it's a bit selfish in nature. So if ever like if you get that, you can get some Redbubble merchandise for. I guess I'll give like a twenty dollar gift card, or something like this. And then you can maybe, uh, if you feel like it, you can purchase some CG merchandise, <laughs> like a CG mug from the Redbubble store. And if you're interested in checking it out, like getting that CG mug in real life, go and check out the video description. There should be a link there to the merchandise, to that Redbubble site. There's also like other uh, products like uh, shirts, stickers, everything with the CG logo. So check it out and feel free to order. But yeah, it's a bit selfish in nature, that giveaway. So but you're not required. You're not required to buy CG stuff but I'll just give you a red bubble gift card and uh, it's up to you where you use it you can buy it buy the products from a completely different youtuber go and uh, explore it it's just one option the CG uh, merchandise is just one option yeah wink wink <laughs> but yes I also pl I also want to give out some games although I have no clue what because probably everybody has ETS and ATS already or maybe not but yeah, I'm not yet sure how I'll do that, what kind of giveaway makes the most sense. If you have some keys for giveaway though, let me know. I'm not sure how we can validate that, but we'll, have, we'll, we'll find a way. If you want some, if you have some things that you can like donate, that I can use for the giveaway, I'd be happy to accept them. It would be kind of difficult to uh, validate them, but... Uh, We'll see how it works, yeah. We'll see how it works. Just let me know if you're interested in con contributing to that. But yeah, that's that's the plan. But yeah, as you might know, I don't really do a lot. I don't really do a lot of giveaways. It's not my expertise. <laughs> Money is not my expertise. Okay, but yeah, thanks for the question, Rohan. So I could uh, bring up as well the plans. And if you have any suggestions on how we go about that, let me know as well in the comments. Happy to listen, happy to incorporate that. Good. Alright, and then uh, Jay had a couple of questions for me. Thank you for the list of questions, Jay. These are very interesting discussion points. So let's go through them one by one and let's see how far I can get. Alright, so first one is what occupations did you want to be in when you were a kid? So, uh, yeah, that's quite interesting. So right now, I am in IT professionally. So I went, uh, I went ahead and got a degree in computer science. And yeah, that's my, that's where I went to in the university. That's what I took. Oh no! Thank you. But yeah, it, it wasn't always the case. I wasn't always into computers. When I was uh, young, my brother exposed me to computers when the internet was still new, back when things were like dial-up. When you had dial-up and hear that uh, funky modem sound, you know that like digital or how do you say, that digital handshake, maybe it's not digital, but that handshake, ooh nice bus. It's probably a Mexican bus, huh? Good. So yeah, um, I wasn't. It wasn't always my dream, though, to be an IT consultant. Well, initially, I was always uh, into becoming a doctor because my parents are doctors. Yeah, both my parents are doctors. Different specializations, but they're both doctors. And uh, of course, because we were exposed to, I was exposed to them, and uh, I wanted to become a doctor initially, uh, a surgeon specifically. 
no no specific no specialization in mind but i was uh, exposed to my dad's work so oh farm sim 17 pretty nice oh when viaje just like uh, uh when viaje good uh, good voyage good journey like one bon, bon viage i think right something like that right, let's have, have a look at the sign sonoita yeah i think that's where we're passing through yeah even the road itself even if it's like super flat this road even if it's just a, not really straight but it's also a bit windy right but you can see the the vegetation on the side it's always filled it's always uh, something is always going on it's not like a flat area the signs are customized the the the, the location is uh, the city is highlighted it's raining does it rain in mexico i guess but how often that's a different question but yeah i really like what's happening look at all the, the huts the houses the power cables even just so many things happening here it just looks so realistic everything just blends i would say if not this is like scs quality if not so close to it stop here good but yeah i always wanted to be a doctor and uh, maybe the next question would be like why did you change your mind well it's also because of my parents as i was growing up i got exposed to the realisms the reality of being a doctor first is you would have to study for so long 10 years more than 10 years or something and uh, starting then you would be earning money afterwards if you're lucky uh, you could argue that you kind of earn more and kind of make up for lost time eventually but i was not very excited with studying so long i was uh, excited to work believe it or not and when i graduated from the university i was so happy i didn't want to go back anymore and when i started working i was so happy as well not only because i was working and i was earning my own money but because i uh, there is a certain satisfaction in doing work and uh, earning your own money and uh, the, the work itself is something i liked so i didn't want to go back to school some people like to study me i like to learn but not study specifically if you get the difference so I, I don't need to be in a university or in a course to learn something learning is a lifelong journey right as they say but yeah i'm not a fan of staying in the university for that because it's uh i don't like assignments and quizzes and whatnot <laughs> basically yeah you see here everything is flat yes which might be accurate geographically but there are so many things happening the bushes the signages the mountains in the side distance and even the, the road itself the texture is super nice i love it i love this map so we'll probably we'll try and explore all the areas in mexico if like the special transport dlc for ats comes out then we'll move out of mexico first and then we'll do that or if oregon comes out then we'll explore oregon first but we'll for sure jump back here eventually and explore the rest of it yeah but yes so i got exposed why did i stop becoming or wanting to become a doctor it's one because of the long uh, process yeah I, I did not have enough patience for that and uh, my parents are going uh, being both doctors they're very busy they spend most of their time in the hospital and they do not have a lot of time for family it's not to say that they they did not like they did not uh, how do you say disregard us that's for sure they took good care of us they just did not have a lot of uh, quality time so to speak yeah so a lot of time is in the hospital and uh, they get called to uh, they can get called to emergencies at any point and when they get called to emergencies it's uh, a life on the line like compare that to me in it there are some times when i have to work in the weekends 
there are some times when there is a all hands on deck type of thing when like for example the entire system is down and we have to bring it back up but that's not like a life or death situation it's like the customer is losing money for each second that the system is down and fine that might be big money millions billions or something but it's not a human life when you're a doctor and you have an emergency you can't just say ah let them let them uh, lose money it's a life on the line and uh, it's a much bigger responsibility <laughs> and i didn't want that and mainly the, the the time i wanted some more more time for myself like i wanted uh, a normal job that's what i loved most about working when i was studying i had to of course you had to attend the class you had to do some projects afterwards you do you had to study afterwards so basically your entire day you spend in the university and when you go outside you still have to spend time for it because you have to work on the assignments and projects and uh, all the other stuff you need to work on Ooh, so many trucks in here slow down seems like there is a checkpoint up ahead so I hope I don't hit anything okay yeah yeah looks like a checkpoint hey guys I think these are specific Mexican police cars, huh? Alright. So yes, uh, in the university, when you're at school, basically takes up your entire life. And that's okay, because that's temporary. But uh, one of the joys, being out of school, finishing school, finally getting to work, is when I work, fine, I work for 8 hours. But after that 8 hours, my time is mine. Yeah, no more assignments, no more projects, and I get to earn money. Like I only devote eight hours to the job, no more, uh, no more, no, nothing afterwards, or ideally, and then they pay me for it. Compare that when I was in school, I had to study for eight hours and then do projects and do assignments, study for exams afterwards, and. Uh, and then I have to pay for the tuition, or my parents had to pay for the tuition, yeah? When you start working, it's the complete opposite. And that's why I was so happy graduating. That's why you guys who haven't graduated yet, study well. And uh, make sure you finish school, but I'm sure you'll enjoy once you're out of it. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's my opinion on it, and that's why I was, I was so happy. But yes, uh, so being a doctor, it's uh, not a, an 8 to, five, 8 to 5 job, at least not for all. If you have an emergency, you have an emergency. Like uh, We've had instances with our parents that... Uh, with my parents that um, we had to, they had to go back to the hospital like late at night because there was an emergency and uh, they had to attend to it, they had to save a life. And it's a fulfilling job, I would say. Very fulfilling, being able to save lives, but it's a lot of responsibility. And me being a lazy guy, I guess it's not uh, very much in my uh, in my uh, goal. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy enough saving clients' uh, systems, <laughs> computer systems, rather than saving lives. I don't need that uh, big a burden on my end. But yes, I completely understand that one. It's a noble job, right? Is this uphill? It's uphill. Yeah, it is very much so. I am slowing down a lot, interestingly enough. Fifth gear, 5L, good. Yeah, let's stick to that one. So yes, that's what uh, drove me away from being a doctor. And I guess ultimately I'm happy with my decision. I guess my parents, especially my mom, would have loved me to go become a doctor. They uh, always say, especially my mom used to say, <laughs> it would have been, if only you became a doctor. <laughs> but the good thing is they didn't really force me. Uh, they, they made me, they allowed me to choose whichever I wanted. Even though you could tell in their eyes that they really wanted me to become a doctor, they didn't force me to do anything. So they let me decide on my own. And uh, that's like the uh, biggest, biggest thanks I could give them. To respect my decision. And not try to uh, like, 
take that against me and or influence me. I love that reflection. Loving that reflection. That's awesome, isn't it? Bienvenidos. We are now in Sonoita. Police car? Yeah, in here, in Mexico. And I'm not sure if this is realistic or just not put in the map. But when you enter a city limit, when you enter a city, there is no 30 mile speed limit. It still stays 55. And I'm not really sure if that's realistic. I hope it is. Well, uh, maybe not. Because it doesn't sound so safe, right? Having houses on the side and you can go like 55. Breeze through this. I guess it doesn't make as much sense. Oh, wait a minute, sorry. I have to turn right here because there, we have a detour to Puerto somewhere. Yes, thank you for letting me through. What time is it now, by the way? 8.35 p.m. Can we sleep? Not really. Okay, and I guess we'll be late a bit because it's an important delivery. But we are sightseeing along the way. But fine. Good. So yes, that's the main question. Uh, what other job did I want to have? Well, uh, I guess that's mainly it. Doctor and then computers. Nothing really specific in computers, but I really like computers, so I went with something that was related to that one. Oh crap, it's getting dark. This is bad. This is bad for sightseeing. But it's good for realism, so we'll just have to enjoy whatever we see, right? Good thing is I can turn on my high beams like so. I can just turn it off when someone's passing by. It's very eerie, this place. Also what I like about this place, Viva Mexico, is there is no copy paste. Or I guess that you can will not notice it. There is no copy paste from the default map because everything has to be like Mexican uh, feels, yeah. So this was all hard work. Maybe some roads have been copied, but don't really notice that. I guess even the vegetation is different, huh? I guess these are custom made or something. So yeah, really high regard with this map. Even though I cannot relate with Mexico, I've never been, and I'm not familiar with, so. I'm but I'm still enjoying the scenery very much. There we go. So yes, we will be late, but I don't really mind. So yeah, that's the que that's the answer to that question. Sorry, bro. The next question from Jay, are you a dog person or a cat person or a bird person? I'm definitely a dog person, but I don't hate cats or birds. I just love dogs more. I've always uh, enjoyed uh, being in the company of dogs. They are such adorable uh, beings. Yeah, They can lighten the mood, take out stress. And uh, be a, they can be a such a wonderful companion. If they were not so difficult to take care of, or like you had to maintain, I would have uh, been thinking about getting a dog here in SG. The laws in Singapore are a bit more strict, I think, when it comes to taking care of a pet. You can't just buy it from a pet store, or maybe you can, but I think you have to have some kind of permit. Not really sure haven't explored it but yeah it's a uh, Puerto Penasco there we go exit okay, let's slow down a bit Puerto Penasco we are here and uh, city lights very nice very cozy looking oh and speed bump <laughs> oh that hurt rip suspension Let's just go around here. Is there a view? There looks to be a beach there. Yeah, but it looks a bit more industrial than uh, scenic. So let's just make a U-turn here. And call it quits. Circle back. Maybe wipers faster. Good. Oh, 
don't you guys even think about blocking my way, thank you. Nice. Alright, going back the opposite way now. Definitely a dog person. We've always had dogs when I was growing up. And uh, although our dogs for some reason did not really live so long like other people's dogs, I'm not sure maybe we're not lucky in that regard or maybe we're not uh, familiar with the proper, I don't know, maybe we're missing something. But yeah, I've always been uh, attached to dogs. And every time I would see one outside the house, I would like to pet them <laughs> and play with them. I've been bitten by dogs a couple of times, even our own dogs, but I think I've learned since. Uh, that's not to say I won't be bitten again, but at least I hope the odds are not as likely as before. But yeah, they're just such uh, amicable creatures, yeah. And they really are like, they sincerely care for you <laughs> and uh, empathize with you. So yeah, maybe if I get a chance, if I can get a dog here in SG, that would be so nice. Cats I also like. I don't like taking care of them though. I just like watching them in videos maybe. Cat memes, cat videos, but I don't like, don't like taking care of them because they're too bossy. Like, yeah, that's the main difference, right? When you have a dog, you have a companion. When you have, you have a cat, you have a boss. <laughs> the cat is the boss. You are its human. And yeah, you have to do his bidding, his or her bidding. So it's a, it's a bit tricky. And birds, I'm not really fond of birds. Uh, I have no clue how to take care of them. I have no clue how they, like, different kinds of birds. Definitely dogs. Dogs for the win. What kind? Well, my dream would be to get a, uh, a golden retriever. Because I like dogs for companionship, not for being a guard dog or a pet dog. I want someone who is uh, smart, uh, who can uh, understand more or less. what I want them to, what I'm trying to tell them, yeah, they can uh, understand me better and maybe even do some tricks on the side <laughs> just for fun. But yeah, I really like golden retrievers because they're smart, they're very, uh, how do you say, hmm, I can't, I don't know the English term, but the, 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 they're very nice dogs, <laughs> that's an understatement, but yeah, they're like, uh, perfect for companionship yeah they're not uh, noisy and they are I think they're the perfect companion so yes golden retrievers for the win they're they might be harder to maintain though because they're pretty hairy so I guess when they when they lose their fur it might get pretty messy hard to uh, clean up after them but still I think it would be worth it I'm not too fond of the like the small dogs like the chihuahua uh, I like more furry <laughs> furrier dogs than the, the the more skin dogs if you get what I mean how about you guys are you a dog person or a cat person? In which breed do you like best? I've never had a golden retriever though. I've never had one. Maybe that's for the future. But yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, first gear please, thank you. Good. On to the last leg of our journey, I think. We've discovered how many cities today. Centro, Mexicali, Sonoita, Puerto something, and now this one. How many are those? You count. <laughs> Good. 
rain is over. No, not yet. Just can't see them so much. Pretty inviting diner. Pretty dark though. Pretty shady actually. Nice. Alright, so that's for that question. Next one. Uh, what movies could you watch over and over and still love watching it? Weirdly enough, I'm not a fan of repeating movies. No matter how much I enjoy a movie, I am. Although, I have repeated some of them, that's true. Especially the Christopher Nolan ones. The ones which require you to uh, process a lot of stuff. Like, very intellectual uh, movies. Maybe that one. Like normally I wouldn't be in the in the habit of repeating movies when once I've watched it I'm good with that. But some movies are exceptions. And uh, the classics for sure. I would like to repeat from time to time. Forrest Gump, Shawshank Redemption, you know, the classics. But those there are some which I would like to repeat immediately. And those are mostly the Christopher Nolan ones. Christopher Nolan has a an immense talent for making you think and uh, making you absorb more after each oh. what is that? it's a cop okay. let's ignore them aha uh -huh. overweight or something DUI hopefully not oh the rain is gone finally but yes, the Christopher Nolan ones, even the, the Dark Knight series from Christopher Nolan, the Batman series from Christopher Nolan, I really like. And we are speeding, aren't we? Yes, we are. Slow down a bit. There you go. 55. Customer expects delivery very soon. We might actually still make it, interestingly enough. Yeah, we just might. I do like the stars. Starry, starry sky. Beautiful. Oh, no hearing tone hype. But yeah, the, the Dark Knight series, I think I re watched them twice. At least twice. Especially the, the last one, the Dark Knight... Uh, Dark Knight Crisis, I think, is the third one, right? That one I repeated, that was so nice. Is that the one with Bane? I think so. Yeah, that was so good. The Inception movie. Yeah, I've watched two or three times, I think. Although by now, because of my goldfish memory, I've forgotten all about it. I would like to watch it again, though. And the... what else? What else are Christopher Nolan movies? Even Dunkirk. That's his as well, right? The, the war movie. Dunkirk, I didn't really appreciate during my first time watching it. But the second time I watched it, I started enjoying because it's a very different movie, very different layout. If you just watch it and don't set your expectations in the beginning, you will be bored, you will get sleepy. But if you get into it in the right state of mind, you will appreciate it more and you will start seeing the beauty of it. it looks like we're approaching a very interesting bend. A more exciting one. Oh, too bad. It's a bridge. Man, I would have loved to take some shots here. It's a bit too dark though. Sorry. Good. Not too bad. It's not too bad. <laughs> the, the sharper curves are about to come. This is just a warm up. This is not even a warm-up, this is just a, how do you say, an intro. Because the, the bends that we will be driving through this map, and ex especially from what I've been hearing in the Mexico Extremo, oh, that will really make your, how do you say, hackles rise. The hairs on your uh, arm rise up. <laughs> up, up, up. Yeah, so what else? Uh, Dunkirk, uh, 
uh, Dark Knight Rises, Inception, what else are Christopher Nolan ones? There's a lot of them. The, the space one, uh, was it Interstellar? Yeah, though, I really love, love it because it, the first time you watch it, you get, start thinking, right? It gets you thinking and then when you, you want to watch it a second time to verify it or to see if you understood it or maybe you'll understand it differently and oftentimes when I do, when I watch it the second time, I do get a different understanding. It's very interesting. Bienvenidos, Caborca. Very nice view from here. Look at that. The lights from the houses. That looks so real, doesn't it? I love it. Oh, and I like that random event. Greyhound bus broken down. And thank you guys for letting me know about that. That, that term slipped my mind. The Greyhound company. I said gargoyle, right? <laughs> Way to go, right? Super close. At least it started with G. And yeah, those are the kind of movies that I watch over and over, meaning the Christopher Nolan ones. The ones that require you to think, that are open for interpretation, and uh, yeah, I really like those intellectual movies. The Marvel movies, uh, they are pretty good, but I don't often repeat them. I do want to repeat this one though, this Infinity War. And I, I will not give any spoilers, but watching it once doesn't feel like it's enough for me. I really want to repeat it, I just don't have time. I'm sure I missed a, a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, it might be worth another look. But yeah, usually I like repeating those ones which require you to think and are open for interpretation. And then uh, there are like two more questions, but I think this will go pretty fast from Jay. Can you say the alphabet backwards? I never got that talent. I never acquired that skill. I don't know why. Isn't that like a test, like uh, a DUI test to check if you're drunk or not? Well, me personally, if I was asked that by a police officer, even if I wasn't drunk, I probably wouldn't be able to answer. Z. Y. X. W. U. Something like that. I, I have no clue if that's right. But yeah, it just really ex escapes me. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I would say just a flat no. Can you s say the alphabet backwards? No. And then the last one is why roses are red and violets are blue. I kind of remember that there was an explanation about that before. But uh, it escapes me now. I would say it's just for poetry. No clue. How the heck? I can understand why a rose could be red, but how the heck can a violet be blue? Me blue in a way like sad? I have no clue. <laughs> Very interesting choice of uh, question though. Okay, time to work. Time to focus. But yeah, thanks for the questions, Jay. I don't think I can expound more on those two questions, but thank you for those. <laughs> Right. Let's see if we can park like this. Uh, might not be enough space. Let's get more. That might be better. Hmm. Interestingly enough, I don't think that will still be enough. Yeah, let's get more space in here. to make use of the entire thing because the trailers I think are longer than versus uh, trailers in the US I think are longer in general than in the Europe correct me if I'm wrong but that's my impression because these things are much harder to turn or that might be because of my truck the longer wheelbase of the truck the American truck versus the European one see that's still not enough I think I might take that right side. Okay, let's see if we can like, go forward here, straighten it a bit. Can you 
go straight from here. Okay, and ETA wise, 26 minutes. Okay. Not yet late. Not yet late, but pretty close. Have a look at that one. Absolutely cannot see anything from that mirror. Slowly, but surely, and then move it like so. Fully. Okay. I think that's working out. There we go. Actually, that worked. Not sure how, but I'll take it. Let's have a look. It's not too bad. It is not too bad. I'll take that. Good. So thank you for the questions, Jay. <laughs> Very interesting ones. All right, let's have a look at the stats on the delivery. It's excellent here in game and we did level up. That's beautiful. Uh, but in the Discord server, 0.01% damage. I like that. And that's 33.33 liters per 100 KMs. Not too shabby. And we earn 13k. The good thing is we're not late. We're minutes from being late. Beautiful. Ooh. Can I get that? Or should I start with fuel economy? Yeah, I got 33.33 without even having a point in fuel economy. That will become even better with that. Toxic and infectious substances. You know what? Let's complete the ADR list. Good. Alright, awesome. Well, let's leave it there for now, guys. Thank you for staying with me. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll take you a bit more. Let's finish this. Let's complete this. Let's go and sleep. So we start the next episode with daylight for a change. And at least we end the episode here with daylight as well. Better visuals and whatnot. The blinkers on the trucker is kind of uh, quiet, isn't it? Would have preferred a louder one. It's no Scania or no DAF. I love the blinkers. Scania blinkers and DAF blinkers. Those are my two favorites. And then let's reverse properly. Did you guys see the moon? Mm -hmm. As far away as possible. Is there even a line? I can barely see it. If there is. I think that should be good enough. Why is there a flickering thing there? Bodega Aurera. There we go. 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Flickery. Lights hype. Beautiful truck though. Anyway, let's leave it there, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. I surely did. If you did, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, hit the like button. Let me know what you think. Comment away. Share with your friends. You know the drill. Thank you for watching, have a nice one, and clumsy trucking. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Viva Mexico.